The Donus.js 5 uses hooks as its event system to notify us when a particular action is run against our models. Each of the hooks has both a before and an after variant. So if you wanted to know when an action was attempted, you would want to utilize the before variant. And if you wanted to know when an action was successfully performed, you'd want to use that after variant. All of the hooks that are available are listed on the documentation. If you go underneath the ORM section within hooks, there's a section on this page listed as available hooks that has all of them here. You have before save, after save, before and after create, before and after update, before and after delete, before and after paginate, fetch, and find. And each of those will run on the particular action that they describe. So after and before paginate, it's gonna run whenever you try to paginate a result set. Fetch will be whenever you run a query. Find is whenever you perform a find action. So that would be a single record that you return back. Delete's whenever you're deleting a record. Update, updating. Uh, create would be creating. And save would be for both creating and updating. Now there's a couple of different ways that we can actually bind event listeners to these hooks. There's the preferred approach, which is utilizing decorators shown it above the available hook section in this documentation page. And this is probably the one that you're most familiar with because it's used on the default user model that Lucid provides if we have it create a user model for us. So this hash password hook would then run since it's for before save anytime that we create or update a record on our user model. So that's what the decorator approach looks like. Now there's also a boot method approach. So all models in Adonis.js have this boot method within it. And this boot method itself actually has has static methods that we can add to it to bind the very same event handlers that we can bind using decorators, except binding them within this boot method. So here we have this dot before create to hook in an event handler for any creation that may occur within this model. All of the same events that are available within the decorator approach are also available within the boot model approach. You have this dot before for the before variants and this dot after for the after variance with this approach. So although the decorator approach is the preferred approach for binding event handlers to your models, the benefit of the boot method approach is that we can actually bind it at the base model level, making whatever hooks we define globally defined across all models in our application. So let's go ahead and jump into our code base and take a look at what that looks like. So for this lesson, I'm going to be working within the Atticast Studio repository, as we've already got some CRUD operations that we can perform to test this out and see what it looks like. One prerequisite I will tell you that I already have set up within this project that you may want to set up within yours as well is within the config underneath app.ts within HTTP. I have this use async local storage set to true. By default, I believe that this is set to false. So you'll see where that comes into play here in a little bit, but just know whenever we reach for the HTTP context within our hook in itself, this is what's enabling that to happen. Okay, so next let's go ahead and dive into our providers here. You can do this within any provider, so you can add a provider specifically for this if you wish. I'm gonna be doing this within the app provider. This should come default within any Adonis.js application, and we're gonna be working within the boot method here. So first, let's go ahead and grab our base model. So we can do this by doing const. We can extract out the base model from default return there. Equals this app container, and we will resolve binding Adonis, reach for Lucid, and we want to specifically go for the ORM there. Now, we do still need the default boot method to run, and in order to override it, we will need to define a boot method in its place. So let's go ahead and grab the default boot method so that we can call it within the boot method that we end up replacing it with. So we'll do const boot equals base model dot boot. And now that we have a reference to the original boot method, we can go ahead and define our own. So we can do base model dot boot equals, and we'll want to do this as a block level function so that we actually have a reference to this within JavaScript. Within all boot methods, it is recommended to go ahead and run if this booted, go ahead and just return back just in case this accidentally gets called after it's already been booted, just to prevent any of these event handlers from being recorded twice. Then we can go ahead and call the original boot method. So we can do boot.call this. And from within this boot method, we have access to the same thing that we have an access to within any of our traditional models. So we can do this dot after this dot before, just like we were working within a traditional model. So here we could do this before, provide in the event name. So we can do create within our callback here, we'll actually get the model item. So this will be an instance of one of our models. So this hook here will run anytime a model within our application is created. So if we take a look at the models that we have, it's not going to matter whether it is our asset model, block model, collection, history, post, 
it will run for all of them because all of these extend our base model. And this item here could be any of them. So we either need to account for that or we can just use something that's shared across all of our models. And that's really all that we need to do here today in order to log out what's happening. So since we're working with a notebook that's ultimately going to end up executing within an HTTP request, we should have access to our HTTP context. And since we've set that use async local storage flag to true within our configuration, we are able to go ahead and fetch that using the HTTP context itself. So we can do const ctx equals http context. If you know for certain that this hook will run within an HTTP request, you can go ahead and do get or fail. If you're unsure, if you're using something like WebSockets that's creating records, uh, it's possible that this hook could run outside of an HTTP request. In that case, you'd want to go ahead and utilize the get method, which may or may not be able to return the HTTP context for you, depending on whether or not the actual execution is within an HTTP request. For this project, I do know that we don't have anything besides HTTP requests going on, so I can go ahead and do or fail. So with that in place, what we have available to do is just go ahead and console.log before here to specify that this is before the actual creation. And we can say user, and then we can go ahead and reach inside of our HTTP context, go for the auth user, reach for that ID of that user. And since they haven't yet actually created a record, we can say is creating, and then we can reach for the item itself off of the constructor, we can get the name of the constructor. So if we were to create a collection, this would read user ID. So that could be one is creating and then the model name, which in our case could be a collection. So this would read before user one is creating collection. And then that would give us that within our logs. And then we can copy this and do the same thing for after. So we could switch before here to after. So now we're doing this after the item is created. So it's now persisted to the database. Let's switch this to after user ID. And then we can say as created, since the record is now actually created and persisted within our database, item constructor name, and then we can reach for that item.id. Cool. So let's go ahead and save, boot up our server and take a look at what this looks like. So we can go ahead and do npm run dev to boot this up. All right, I'm going to dive into the application here. We'll go into our taxonomies. Let's just go ahead and create a new one. We'll call this test, save it away. And now if we take a look within our console, we now have before user one is creating taxonomy. And then we have after user one has created taxonomy. And we also have the ID of the taxonomy that was created there as well. Cool. So that seems to be working a-okay. So let's go ahead and copy what we have here and apply it for the other actions. So we also have update and delete. You could also do save if you wanted to. Just note that if you also have update and create, save is just going to be a duplicate of those since save runs for both updating and creating. Um, and then you also have the query options as well if you wanted to log out your queries this way too. Since for this lesson, we're just interested in logging out actual changes within our database, we're going to go ahead and just leave it with the basic create, update, and delete methods. Okay, so we have our two creates here. We will change these ones here to update, update, and update. So is updating. Now, since we're updating a record, that means that we already do have an ID, so we can provide the item ID within the before here as well. And let's change this one to updated and that one should remain the same there for the rest of that and then we also have delete as well so before and after delete is deleting and the same as updating we do have an item id since the record does already exist in order for us to be able to delete it and has deleted item id there as well cool we should still have our server running yep let's go ahead and leave our terminal open there jump back into our browser and let's jump into that test taxonomy all right let's go ahead and change its name to edit give that a save cool let's check out our terminal and you see before user one is updating taxonomy 20 after user one has updated taxonomy 20 so that seems to be working a-okay let's go ahead and delete that taxonomy now so delete that out hit okay to confirm it and let's check out our terminal so now we have before user one is deleting taxonomy 20 and after user one has deleted taxonomy 20. so now we have a good log system not only logging what's changing within our database updating creating deleting taxonomy 20 but we also have who is performing that action via the id of the authenticated user in this case that's a user of an id of one all right so to test to make sure that the model name it does actually change depending on what model is being performed against let's go ahead and create a collection 
here called test. Okay, so there we go. We do have test. We can go ahead and edit it real quick as well. All right, so now we should have, yep, user one is creating collection. User one has created collection 34. User one is updating collection 34 and user one has updated collection 34. So now we've confirmed that that's also changing with what model we're running that against to via our item constructor name. Now, since we do have the access to our HTTP context, if you wanted to, you could also utilize the default logging system that Adonis.js has as well. So you could do CTX logger and then use debug or any of the actions available there as well. So you could use the logger there as well if you wished. Cool, so there's kind of an overlook of how the hook system and event system works with Adonis.js models and how you can use that to create your own breadcrumb trail of user actions across your site.